Athletes of Reddit, how have you used your carefully honed skills in day to day life? Any sprinters who've chased down a mugger? Swimmers who've escaped from sinking ships? Table tennis players who fear no flies? I compete in track and field in a wheelchair and now I am able to get to class from anywhere in the building of my school in under 30 seconds. 3 floors. The biggest slowdown is the elevator. I played tournament level tennis since I was about 14 years old. When I was around 30 I was working for a landscaper and there were wasps swarming around the guy running the backhoe. He didn't have time to move to another of the yard to work and had to finish where he was. So I nailed a disc of wood to a 2x2 stake. Climbed up on the backhoe with him and swatted wasps away until he was done. I must have killed over 100 wasps with hardly any misses. I felt more like an action figure than I ever did actually playing tennis. I'm a pole vaulter. Nothing's happened yet but I hope I'll be chasing down a criminal. He'll jump over a creek. Then I find a piece of bamboo and vault across the creek landing on him. I've played baseball my whole life and still continue to go to the park and pitch a few times a month. Every few days my daughter will pick up a rock and say hey dad, how far can you throw this and that's about the only use I get from it. I used to be a baseball pitcher, my velocity has tapered off, but I still have pinpoint accuracy. My company recently had a summer picnic event which included a chance to dunk all the higher execs in a dunk tank. I sank every person on the first throw. It's also a useful skill for killing spiders, insects, etc. That get into the house but are out of reach. I can hurl any ball shaped object at an insect across the room and usually kill it on the first try. I'm a climber. Think bouldering and sport climbing. I've climbed 3 stories to get back into my dorm one night because I locked myself and the window was open. I used to do this all the time. The curse of climbing is seeing anything remotely climbable and thinking of all the ways to climb it. As a fencer, I'm eagerly looking forward to a situation where I will need to use my skills. The more impossibly contrived the better. I've played soccer for about a decade, and when I was younger, it was a 24 stroke 7 thing, like breathing. I was talking to my teacher once, and she was showing me an article on her brand new iPhone. The first one. It was expensive as heck. We were outside on concrete, and as any Apple user knows, iPhones just explode on concrete. She dropped her phone, and I saw the split second of horror on her face. Out of instinct, I just kicked it back up and caught it, essentially saving her a good few hundred. Not insanely exciting, but I felt like a badass the rest of the day. I don't play football but I still have this instinct, so I end up kicking things really far when someone drops something. I play tennis and because of serving I give people the best high fives ever. My girlfriend is a tennis player, best two handed backhand jobs of all time. I've done MMA for a little over 5 years, and have had to use my skills a few times in RL. Backstory, I am 5 feet 8 inches, and I used to weigh over 430 pounds. I also had a heart attack at the ripe old age of 23 because of said weight. You don't realize you're getting so fat until one day getting out of bed makes you lose your breath for a couple minutes. After said heart attack, my doctors, in all their infinite wisdom, told me I had about a year left to live, unless I lost the weight. I was devastated. About a month and a half after the bad news, a friend of mine, who is a fellow nerd and not very physically threatening, invited me to go watch some local fights. We go and I'm expecting us to heckle the guys, and just be asses, until he disappears as soon as we get there and 45 minutes later I see him fighting in the cage. He ended up getting a TKO in the first round and it just blew me away that he was capable of such a featuring. He introduced me to his coach, and seeing as I had nothing left to lose, besides, you know, life, I told him I'm gonna be dead in a year. Can you help me out expecting to be told no and go on my way? He shockingly said absolutely, and even knowing I had no money to train, I was on disability at the time. He tossed me a set of keys to his gym and told me I could just clean the place in exchange for lessons. After training 6 days a week, 2 6 hours a day, for 22 months I had my first fight, at 205 pounds. 
the coach who changed my life is a pro fighter named Rich Guerin and I literally owe my being here to make snarky comments to you goodly folk to him. After a couple years of training there and teaching the beginners classes, I was able to find work in venues I never would have before. I was a bouncer thanks to my sport for almost a year. Looking like a short Jewish hobbit meant I had to know how to defend myself, as I was usually the first one picked on. I have done security for many casinos, and thanks to MMA I have been able to stop a purse snatcher outside the casino, stop domestic violence, and break up fights. All things I never would have had the ability or balls to do without MMA. Now I work as asset protection and routinely have to tackle and handcuff sharplifters. So basically every job since I lost the weight has been because of mixed martial arts. TL. DR. Was fat. Had heart attack. Instead of dying learned to fight and lost 240 pounds. Use skills a day. Part of being on the swim team was yearly lifeguarding classes. I was swimming in a hotel pool on vacation and a little girl fell in the deep end head first and shot straight to the bottom. I had her out in like 20 seconds. It was pretty cool. This happened once at my friend's party. Her parents were gone and someone pushed the girl who couldn't swim in the pool as a joke. While everyone stared in shock. Us five guys from the swim team there nearly took each other out by jumping in at once. We got her out and it felt pret cool as well. I'm also the guy who can save the ball when it drifts too far out of the beach. I'm really good at throwing trash into garbage bins from long distances. Thank you basketball. Few things have helped me more in life. To be fair, the feeling of nailing a good cross room shot is more satisfying than fricking. I am an intermediate powerlifter strongman who hopes to one day start competing. So people usually use me to pick crap up for them. I guess somebody's gotta move crap. As a featherweight lifter, my mom asks me to open jars and carry the groceries. I belong to an axe throwing league. Every Monday, I competitively throw hand axes at targets. I'm pretty good at it. A few weeks ago, I was out on a day hike with some friends, including a super good looking, nice guy. While we were getting ready for lunch, full on fire BBQ, ETC, I grabbed the axe and dead eyed a tree from about 20 feet. The cute boy was watching. I was success kid that day. I was a basketball player. Good 3 point shooter. State fair comes around. I step up trying to impress a lady with my shooting skills on one of those crooked rim tough to hit shots. I pay for 3 balls, costing me $5. I figure, 1 out of 3 will win me the large stuffed dog and sufficiently impress the girl I'm with. I raise up and hit the first shot. I pick my large stuffed dog. I look the carny in the eyes and he seems skeptical. If I hit the next shot, I get another dog. He smiled at me with one of those smiles that says, Sure kid, I've been rigging this game for years. I take another ball, spin it twice in my hands, find the seams, and with a flick of my wrist send it up. Swish, suck it carny. I choose my second overstuffed dog. I look at the carny and say, Third bullin, I get another dog the carny stared at me, sized me up, and simply said, Nope. I made the carny back down. It worked on the girl. Kinda? Well not really. I mean, months later we started dating and are now married, but this event really had nothing to do with it. I still like to bring it up, and she acts like she's not impressed, but we all know different. I was a figure skater for 10 years. Now I have outstanding balance and quick reflexes, which comes in handy working in a crowded kitchen. I have awesome images in my head of you swan laking it down the tiles. How about a waitress who uses her multi-carrying stacking ability to clean the house? Yeah, exactly as exciting as it sounds. As a non-waiter, I consider multi-carrying abilities as a superhero skill. I'm not soccer pro by any means, but I've played for more than a couple years. I've noticed not only with myself, but other friends that play soccer, if you drop something, 99% of the time, you can at least break its fall with your foot. If you get really good at trapping the ball, it's the same principle. You just pretend your foot is a really fast elevator. The best thing is, if the object is breakable, you can just kick it back up to yourself. I now have an image of you rebounding falling eggs, using your feet, back into their cartons. I've used the skills I learned in rugby to chug a beer like it was lukewarm water. 
Wrestling teaches you how to lift heavy things and how to move people who don't want to. It also teaches you to respect the food you eat every day. Oh god. I honestly don't think the general public truly appreciates food. Cutting weight is a B. I'm a second degree black belt and small framed. I used a pressure point and a joint lock to get a guy off me who was being too aggressive. I want to go into physical therapy to learn all the pressure points and torment people with my knowledge of the body. I used to play competitive chess. I use my acquired patience to search and check for the best material to fap to. I've got you there. I am a USMC sniper and I could wait days for my target while on my stomach. I can maintain a perfect erection for 36 hours while searching for only the best fat material. Another runner here. It takes me roughly 1.30 to get to work by the train. But I can not run there in under 40 minutes. Plus, there's a shower in my office complex. And between running there and back, I get a 12 mile day in every day. My job requires to me sit down for 8 hours and stare at screens. Reddit doesn't even have a chance against me. I'm a cyclist. My woman likes to grab my butt and ogle my legs. That's really the only reason I do it. Thankfully, she doesn't seem to mind my pathetic arms. Our arms are pretty pathetic but our bums are phenomenal. I was a great cross country runner in high school. I've used the skill to pace myself. To outrun cops that have busted parties since I'm underage still. Cops are good for a 100 meter sprint max most of the time. I've ran a 5.30 mile for close to 3 miles to escape cops before. Sometimes I'll even jog the rest of the way back to campus. I had forgotten what a superhero skill sustained pace is. Plenty of guys can chase you down over 50 meters but very few have the stomach to keep going much beyond a city block. Also, I had absolutely forgotten about running home at 2am from drunken parties. Those were some of my favorite runs. Limited your ability to take girls home though. So someone took my phone and I grabbed my saxophone and marched my butt over to him and hit him. One does not simply frick with epic sax guy. I am a whitewater kayak instructor as a hobby. For my after wedding party on Kauai we went in a tubing. We were instructed that you cannot steer the tubes or control them in any way. I was having none of that. When in the tunnels, people would scheme to block me because he is a kayaker. You can't let him pass. I read the water currents, and with a single well placed kick to the other person's inner tube I sent them into slower water and myself into faster, passed with ease. Fairly mundane for a white water story. I shake dice like a crazy mofo. You must be a master at baiting fish. My friend's father, he worked at University of Pennsylvania, and lived in the suburbs. At the age of 50 plus, he would bike to and from about 15 miles each way, on many days. This man was in pretty good shape. So on a business trip to Madrid, Spain, he's walking to a seminar he's presenting when a local comes up and gets very friendly with him. He's putting his arm around my friend's dad, talking to him, etc. Dad is a bit put off by this since we don't do this in the USA, and brushes him away. However, as time passes, he starts to feel a bit rude about having pushed the guy away. So on his way back through the same square, the guy sees him again. So dad is friendlier. He lets him into his personal spaces, does the friendly embrace thing, the whole shtick. Bam. Next thing dad knows, guy has pickpocketed his wallet and books it out of there on foot. Little did he know about dad's athletic prowess. Dad takes off, over little walls, benches, other exciting obstacles. Finally, dad tackles dude in a fountain and they wrestle a bit. Dude slips out of his soccer jersey and escapes with the wallet. Dad, however, has a bad butt piece of memorabilia from his fight for justice. If I ever get to his dad's house again, I'll try to get a picture of him and the jersey for you. I hope this suffices. I've done two tough mudders, but I have yet to use those skills in real life. Colon. Great story. I live for the day. For those not in the know, wrestling is like wrestling, but it involves shouting, as it should. My one roommate is a huge guy, but also a huge guy who practices judo. He once stopped at a McDonald's, saw some guy kicking the crap out of a 10 year old kid, interceded and snapped the guy's arm like a twig. I'm a tennis player and I never get jealous in relationships because love means nothing to me. 
my lack of athletic prowess has led me to not leave my house, decidedly decreasing my chances of having to chase down a mugger, or wrestle a bank thief to the ground. I hope I never have to wrestle a bank to the ground. Ayoyo, seriously, and I can out-type anyone I know. There's only one guy who can out-type me and he got hit by a car a few weeks ago. A-W-W-Y. Breakdancer here. When I trip I often have the option of just going into a stall of some sort. You should try playing dodgeball. I once dodged a ball by going into an echo. I'm a soccer player. I've developed incredible acting skills. As both a referee and a long time goalie, I hate you so hard. That said, congrats on getting good at it. It's nice being able to pick crap up with my feet from time to time. Also, if I drop my phone I can usually catch it or at least lessen the impact. I absolutely do this and it makes me feel like such a boss, until the odd occasion when I mistime it and drop kick my cell phone into the next room. Can't pick up stuff with my feet though. I know this doesn't really count, but I can reach high things because of my height plus jumping ability. I forgot to mention I play basketball. I've been practicing judo for about 12 years now. Started when I was 7 years old. One time, I almost got hit by a car while bombing a hill on my bike. Hopped off and came out with a couple of scraps and bruises. Also, the skills I learned there saved me from a lot of potentially humiliating situations. About to eat crap? Nope ninja roll out. I studied judo for 8 years. Got in a 35 mile per hour motorcycle accident and landed right on my darn face. It would be quite a stretch to call myself an athlete. However being a lineman in high school football from 4 and half years ago gave me a few skills. I am an efficient lifter. Able to utilize my whole body, have rapid movement and get the right angle with things. Also being able to do quick sprints has surprised some of my smaller friends on occasion. Like a dwarf I am very dangerous over short distances. We linemen are the underrated guys everywhere. We're not the average chubby guy. We're fucking dangerous. People don't expect us to be that good at sprinting, reflex, jumping or any physical activity. I play drums. It helps me bang girls. Badum TSS. My friends and I were camping one summer weekend and we all went down to the beach. It wasn't that busy, as there were only a few other groups down by the water. We laid down our towels and grabbed a picnic bench and enjoyed some rays. About a half hour later, a bunch of younger college students came by and were being a nuisance with their frisbees and footballs flying constantly, whizzing by us and getting sand everywhere. They bought booze to the beach which probably made them more ambunctious. My friends and I started to get annoyed and gave them a warning to perhaps move their game a bit down the shore. They were young and drunk, so they didn't listen. One young girl was being rather bratty about it, saying we had no authority, blah blah. I ticked. I had brought my soccer ball along with us to the beach, played varsity. That stuck up girl was about 20 meters away from us in her fold up chair with her beer rested on her armrest. I placed my ball in the sand and took a few steps back, and took a strike straight at the bottle. It was perfect. I blasted the top so the bottle spun like crazy, spraying its contents everywhere and all over the girl's lap. Sure, she got pretty mad and demanded that we paid for her lost beer. Deal with it Jif. TL. DR. Don't leave your beer open on an armrest while being disrespectful of other patrons. I fenced for 10 years. I'm really freaking good at catching that glass of water right before it tips over. My boyfriend and I are ex-college cheerleaders and we work as servers at a local Red Robin chain restaurant. We'll stunt around in order to get easy maintenance stuff done, like cleaning dusting the rafters, air vents, and changing light bulbs. Whenever we lock ourselves out, it's usually pretty easy to get back in by him lifting me to the window. In high school, my cheerleading team and I would go party at the college campus near our town and if the cops ever showed up, we were the people you wanted to help you get over that fence. We would toss each other over and get out of there real fast. That's it. Stunt cheerleader wait staff. I've played wide receiver my whole life and even though I've stopped playing football, I still have my reflexes for catching things. Every time something is dropped near me, I naturally react and catch whatever dropped. I worked a paper route growing up so we always had tons of rubber bands around. 
Me and my brothers would always shoot them at each other and developed pinpoint accuracy. One time in high school this fly kept annoying everyone at my art table, so I shot it with a rubber band. Oh no. It's the very scary pancake man. Comment I am not scared to make him go away. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.